Hi, this is Pam from Wood Camper Crochet Crafts. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this really quick and easy crochet bracelet. This is the perfect summer project. You can crochet these for yourself, for friends or family. It's also the perfect inexpensive and quick crochet project for farmers markets or craft fairs. Before we get started, you'll need a few things. I'm using the Burnett Handicrafter Cotton Yarn. It's a medium weight yarn, so you can use this yarn or something similar. I also have a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, a darning needle to weave in my ends, and you can use a stitch marker if you like. You will also need a button. I have a pack of buttons that come in different sizes that I purchased off Amazon. On the button, it says handmade with love. Before you get started, you'll need to do a few quick measurements. So take a piece of yarn and measure it around your wrist. The length of the yarn is the total length of your bracelet. Looking at my bracelet here, you can see that on either side, I've decreased in size. The decreased portion of the bracelet is one inch in total. Because we decrease on both sides, that's a total of two inches. So taking my yarn, I'm going to measure out the two inches, which is the decrease in my bracelet. This will be the same regardless of the size of your bracelet. Whatever you have left over is how big you want the body of your bracelet. You can see here, the body of my bracelet needs to be five inches in total. Because this bracelet is made in two sections, we're going to divide that in half. So that's two and a half inches. So when I'm making my bracelet, the body will be two and a half inches on one side and two and a half inches on the other side. It's time to start crocheting. In this video, I'm using a thicker yarn and a larger needle so it's easier for you to see. So we're going to start with a simple slip knot, insert your hook, and then pull tight. We start by chaining 11. So yarn over and pull through, that's one. Yarn over and pull through, that's two. Yarn over and pull through, that's three and we're doing 11 in total, so four. And our final one, 11. So you can see here we've completed our chain 11. So we have a chain of 11, but we're gonna have 10 stitches in each row. The reason we chained 11 is because we're starting in the second chain from our hook. So there's the first one, and the second one. We're going to insert a hook into the second chain and we're going to do a slip stitch. So yarn over and then pull through all the loops on your hook to complete the slip stitch. So that's one. We're doing 10 slip stitches in total. So yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. That's two. So we're just gonna continue along here. Make sure this doesn't get twisted and we're just doing slip stitches all the way along until we have 10 in total. I'll let you work on this on your own and I'll meet you at the end of the row. So here's my last stitch, insert my hook, yarn over and pull through all the loops on my hook to complete my final slip stitch. So I have 10 in total and at the end of the row, you're always going to chain one and turn. Before we get started on row two, I want you to look at the row we just completed and I want you to identify your front and your back loop. So I'm using these stitch markers here and you can see I'm using the pink stitch marker to show you where the front loop is and the blue stitch marker to show you where the back loop is. So this back loop here, when you flip the work over and we're starting row two, becomes the front loop on the other side. So that's the loop we're working under, the front loop. So you can just see here, we're working under this loop here. And then if you look at it from the front, you're not working under that loop or that loop or that loop. Look at it from the top and find your front loop. So this single loop is the loop that we're going to be working under. So now that we've identified the front loop, it's time to get started on row two. So insert your hook under that front loop only. And we're doing slip stitches. So 
yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete the slip stitch. So look at your work from the top, identify that front loop only, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete the slip stitch. So we're doing 10 slip stitches in total, working in that front loop only. I'll let you work on that on your own and I will meet you at the end of the row. I'm at the end of my row, I have one more stitch, so I'm gonna insert my hook under that front loop, yarn over and pull through all the loops on my hook to complete my slip stitch. So I'm going to chain one and turn at the end of every row. So if you look here, now it's really easy to see that front loop only. So it's just right here all the way along. So I'm inserting my hook into that front loop, yarn over and pulling through all the loops on my hook. So you can continue working on this on your own. You're going to be doing 10 slip stitches in every row, working in the front loop only. And at the end of every row, you're going to chain one and turn. The number of rows will depend on the measurement that you did at the beginning. You will remember that I measured my bracelet and determined that the body of my bracelet needs to be five inches in total. Because the bracelet is worked in two sections, this section will be two and a half inches. So I'm gonna keep crocheting, but I'll pause every once in a while to measure the length of my bracelet. Once my bracelet is two and a half inches in length, I'm ready to start my decrease. So you can continue to work on this, and when you are ready to start your decrease, I will meet you back here to show you how it's done. Our bracelet's worked in two parts, so the body in the first part is two and a half inches long. Now we're ready to start our decrease. I'm just going to insert my hook here, so chain one and turn. For the decrease rows, we're going to skip the first stitch in the row. So there's the first stitch and there's the second stitch. So we're skipping that first stitch and inserting our hook under the front loop only in that second stitch. And we're gonna continue just doing our slip stitches. And there's our next one, that's two. And the next one here is three. So we're going to have nine slip stitches in total. So that's four. Five. Six. Seven. eight, and our last slip stitch in the row is nine. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through all the loops. So now we have nine slip stitches in total. At the end of the row, I'm going to chain one and turn. So we're gonna continue doing a decrease. We're going to skip that first stitch in the row. Starting in the second stitch, we're doing slip stitches, working in that front loop only. And in this row, we are going to have eight slip stitches in total. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and our final slip stitch in the row is going to be eight. So we're at the end of the row. We are going to just chain one here and turn. Once again, we're going to skip that first stitch starting in the second stitch in our row and we're doing seven slip stitches this time in the row. 
So now that you know how to do the decrease, I'll let you work on this on your own. You're gonna continue doing this until you only have three stitches left in the row. So remember, you're always skipping that first stitch and starting in the second stitch in the row. You can pause this video and work on this on your own and I'll meet you back here when you're all done. I've finished my decrease and I have one, two, three stitches in my last row. So now it's time to do the button loop. So we're gonna chain four, there's one, two, three, and our last one here is four. We're just gonna pause here a minute. I'm going to show you what the button loop looks like, and I'm just gonna grab my button just to make sure it's the right size. So if you're using a smaller or large button, you may need to chain more or chain fewer. Just adjust it to fit your button. So now I'm gonna go back into that first stitch in my row and I'm going to work under both loops. So inserting my hook under both loops. It's a little hard to get that hook in there. There we go. And I'm just doing a slip stitch. So yarn over and I'm going to pull through all the loops on my hook. And then you can grab some scissors and cut the end of your yarn. I've already done that here. And I'm just going to insert it through the loop and pull tight to make a knot. So you can see I've got a buttonhole now and I have finished the first part of my bracelet. We've completed half of our bracelet. So to do the other half, we are going to be working on our original chain. So you can see this is the end that we started with. And you can see there's my original chain. So you can just take this end here and put it off to the side. We don't need that for a minute. You can weave it in after. And I'm going to take my ball of yarn. I'm going to insert my hook into that first chain. Take my yarn and yarn over and I'm going to pull through. So you can just grab that new tail and hold it in place so you can get some tension on your yarn. And we're just chaining one to start. And then working in the next chain here, so you're just working under that single loop, insert your hook, yarn over, and we're doing a slip stitch. So you're pulling through all the loops on your hook. The first one's always a little difficult. So we've got our first slip stitch and we're gonna keep going, working in that original chain. We're doing slip stitches all the way along and we're doing 10 slip stitches in total. So this is my third. And insert your hook into that original chain. This is our fourth slip stitch. And we have five. six, seven, eight, nine, and our last one here is 10. At the end of every row, we are going to chain one and turn. So I'm gonna let you work on this on your own. Remember that we are doing slip stitches working under that front loop only, and we are doing 10 slip stitches in each row. So at the beginning of the video, I measured, and I want the body of my bracelet to be five inches in total. So since we're doing this in two parts, each part is two and a half inches. I'm going to keep doing this until I measure two and a half inches from that original chain. You can work on this on your own. You can make your bracelet as big or as small as you want. And I will meet you back here for the decrease. I've finished the body of my bracelet and I'm ready to start my decrease. I'm at the end of my row. I'm going to chain one and turn.
So we're going to do this decrease the same way we did before. There's the first stitch, there's the second stitch. So we're going to skip that first stitch, inserting our hook into the second stitch, and we're doing slip stitches. So there's my first stitch, slip stitch, and my second slip stitch, once again working under that front loop only. So in this row, we're going to do nine slip stitches in total because we skipped that first stitch. So I'm just going to keep going here. So five, six, seven, eight, And our final slip stitch in the row is nine. I'm at the end of my row. I'm going to chain one and turn. So once again, skip that first stitch, working in the second stitch under the front loop only. And in this row, we're going to do eight slip stitches all the way along. So you know how to do this decrease, you've done it before, so I'm gonna let you work on this on your own. You're gonna keep repeating these steps until you only have three stitches left in your row, and I'll meet you back here. I've just completed my final decrease row, and I have one, two, three stitches in my final row. Now we're just gonna take this loop here, and you'll need to cut your yarn, which I've already done, and I'm gonna take the end of my yarn and pull it through the loop, and pull tight to finish off. And this is what your bracelet will look like when you're all done. So we have two more steps. The next step is to add the button. We're just gonna add the button to the end of our work here. And I've already threaded through the yarn. The easiest way to do that is just to wet the ends and pull it through. I then grab a crochet hook, usually one smaller than I was working with, and just use it to pull the yarn through. I just pull one piece of yarn through at a time. So there's the first one. And then I'm gonna leave a bit of a gap between the two. And then I'm gonna pull through the other piece of yarn. Whoops, I'm not making this look very easy, am I? So I'm gonna pull through that other piece of yarn. And then I'm just going to tie it in a knot to fix that button on. And we're all done. We have our button on. Now the final step is to weave in the ends. So before you start weaving in your ends, make sure you figure out what side is the inside because you don't want to be weaving in your ends to the outside of your bracelet. So this is my inside. I'm going to be weaving my ends in on this side. So grab your darning needle and start weaving in your ends. And this is what the bracelet looks like when it's all done. I hope you liked this video. If you did, it really helps me out if you do go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching everyone.